Hello, I'm Tag and this is Bob. And you're listening to Bob and Tag Talk. Before we start the show, I'd like to point out that the topics discussed on Bob and Tag Talk are Bob and Tag's personal opinions and comments. We don't intend to cause harm or offense. We are simply providing our personal commentary on subjects that we find interesting. Today we're going to talk about mystery novels and specifically what it takes to write a mystery novel and the you know uh, the authors who have already written mystery novels and what are their uh, takes on inspirations and how they write it. So obviously uh, probably one of the biggest uh, uh, mystery novel authors is Agatha Christie. Yeah. Uh, she's uh, her novels are read even today and uh, her, uh, the novels that she's written um, movies based on that are being you know made today so mm-hmm. yes. uh, it's still very prevalent and the idea of mystery and detective and solving a crime all of that is uh, still yeah it's a theme that we still uh, a lot of other the theme is copied in movies mm. series the, and yeah, many different forms yeah. comics whatever mm. it is mm-hmm. so what what are some of your favorite agatha christie novels uh, i i remember very few names so it was a mm-hmm. long time ago yeah. there was like famous one like abc murders mm-hmm. and then a uh, lot of hercule poirot novels yeah yeah and then there is also a uh, marple novels oh yeah miss marple miss i completely marple. forgot about yeah. those so agatha but the agatha christie's novels are a little bit uh, like uh, they are little bit of uh, like marple novels are all based on communities mm-hmm. and then uh, hercule poirot is mostly based on international or uh, some kind of uh, family or mostly international right. hercule poirot is very rarely that we see uh, yeah i do remember some stories are only in england and so on right right yeah but at the same day it was on the same time actually mm. the sherlock holmes was also very popular at the mm. same time mm-hmm. it was around after world war or something mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. so there are a lot of mystery novels that were very popular and there was also legal dramas right right a, a lawyer or attorney based mm-hmm. so those kind of novels are there like uh, lincoln lawyer that's the first thing that comes to my mind uh, it's very popular yeah uh, even before that there were a lot of series like the practice mm-hmm. and then csi uh, CSI true but even crime before dramas. even before CSI and all came into the picture i think there was something called law and order but i think that was not a detective story it was more on the mm-hmm. legal mm-hmm. side i suppose yeah more on the legal side yeah yeah and then but the thing is that there's a lot of the original version of the legal side I mean, long long ago it was perry mason perry mason okay perry okay, mason. okay. So okay. those series of books Earl Style Gardner are very popular. Right, right. Has been there for a long time, and there's also a series about it. Right. Um, I I can't remember a lot of Perry Mason, but yeah, I know mm. the name. It's like there, Eric yeah. Gardner, Perry Mason. I think Sidney Sheldon also. I'm not sure. No? Sidney Sheldon, yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, Agatha Christie, Arthur Conan Doyle. Who else? Uh, there's there's those are the classics. Uh, yeah, right. classics. <laughs> I suppose if you want to go a little bit more into like a teenage uh, mystery sort of novel, Drew, Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what that's how I started mm-hmm, Nancy mm-hmm. Drew, and then I progressed to Agatha Christie and all of that. Yeah. So uh, it's a uh, it's it's very nostalgic to remember all yes, of that. Yes, true. So uh, I I specifically wanted to talk about you know obviously novel writing is difficult. Mm. Writing anything is difficult. um but especially when you're writing a mystery novel you have to preserve that twist somehow you yes, have to yes. make sure that um even though you know people have the readers have guesses on it you still have to make sure that you know um, once they come to the end of the book they'll be like a satisfying oh, conclusion yes yes but the thing is uh, i remember that uh, most of the mystery writers their whole uh, premise or the whole idea is to make the reader guess Mm. or to make some analysis or mm. something we draw them into the story right. see who could have done it and yes things. yeah so they are also like a pa- partnering the detective who's actually uh, you know uh, actually uh, identifying who the murderer or who the what are uh, talking to the witnesses what questions they can ask and so many things like that absolutely because when you when you tell all this i remember how i used to read it when i was younger i always used to imagine myself you know standing beside the detective yes, like yes. hmm you know all of that you know getting my thinking cap on so mm-hmm. i completely get it but yeah it's 
it's very different when you have to think about all of the minutiae that goes into you know finding a killer because mm. you will have to think about obviously the evidence that you mm. need to plant the people and their backstories yeah. the alibis have to be perfect mm. so it's just it's very like a, putting a puzzle piece together yeah yeah it's, the, yeah, yeah. it's the, it's kind of challenging and at the same time that is what at the end it gives you satisfaction mm, that is true okay. yeah yeah so you were telling me about how agatha christie writes uh, her novels yeah. so uh, some of the times what agatha christie does is she writes the ending first she did what she's, did i say does not no no as in like she's she's no longer and so obviously okay. agatha christie no longer right but agatha christie's books are still being right. written by other writers ah okay okay makes sense okay so like her characters or something mm-hmm. like that so uh, things like uh, she writes the ending first right. and then most of the time she sets up the crime and then the actual uh, who who had like did it right. and then from that she goes back and see how the actual the original story is actually that uh, is an interesting way to do it. it and it sort of reminds me about the mental models episode that we were talking mm-hmm. about like uh, you know different ways to approach different a problem different ways to approach a problem yeah so i think uh, and sometimes agatha she doesn't even decide who is the actual killer mm-hmm, not mm-hmm, yet mm-hmm. so she puts all the suspects together and mm-hmm. then and probably at the later moment of time she decides who could it be mm-hmm. she leaves clues in such a way that it could be anyone mm-hmm. and then there should be one final clue which actually tells us there is one probably that's what i would do if i was writing novels mm-hmm. especially detective novels because i would have no idea where the story goes i just let it go and i'd be like okay this person seems like he could be mm-hmm. killer or he there's or also she. one more theory of writing where it's called uh, it's like a i don't know what was the term is actually called mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you put up a story you have uh, all the uh, witnesses and the characters and everything mm-hmm. but uh, finally uh, it will be like it's someone not even uh, part of the story it's someone outside oh that is very that is very dissatisfying un- yeah yes. yeah yeah it's so yeah. people comic book writers also use this kind of uh, effect mm-hmm. where they write a story mm-hmm. and sometimes they want to know where exactly the story is going mm-hmm. but they get into a kind of a trouble where they are not able to resolve a particular point mm-hmm. so how do you get out of it is because you have to bring up some other character or had to resolve that something in the some of in the story makes sense that makes sense and mm-hmm. speaking of comic books yeah it, it's also very uh, interesting how they managed to put easter eggs in every single thing yeah, true. Uh, and then try to bring it up later even with the game of thrones books and all of that so uh, foreshadowing yeah yeah foreshadowing foreshadowing i don't know if it is really difficult or not but it's extremely satisfying Six to know plus, yes. so i i don't exactly know how the authors think about it you know to come back to it i'm not sure mm-hmm. how they think about it but yeah it is satisfying to the reader so that's uh, yeah i get that agatha christie writes that way i'm not sure how other mystery uh, novelists write their books probably mm-hmm. the way you said like yeah. uh, you know make uh, go through the lane and then see where it goes or something mm-hmm. like atkarson and doyle was a little bit more procedural mm-hmm. so yeah the way he wrote the story probably would be very different from agatha christie's mm-hmm. that's true that's true and you also mentioned legal dramas so true. i uh, the people who write uh, Uh, novels about legal dra- uh, dramas uh, uh, need to know a lot about the yeah, law lot about itself. the process itself about the law mm. lot of research goes into it mm-hmm. and then uh, now at least uh, there has been some difficulties in writing mystery novels mm. because of uh, the usage of mobile phones and laptops right. i mean it was easier for probably uh, may have may have been easier for atha konanda lagata krishna other authors mm. to probably take the story slow and then and mm-hmm. then probably but now everything you have in your palm of the hands so now a lot of authors are struggling with how do you actually in this real world how do you make a mystery out of it it's ah. very very difficult to write a mystery when you have everything all the information that you have immediately mm-hmm. there's nothing to search for ex- mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. and things like that so nowadays that's why there's a different uh, at least in the series right mm-hmm. the tv series that we generally do so a lot of different kind of um, 
setups mm-hmm. where they do kind of a mystery like a missing persons case mm-hmm. uh, because this will be the most difficult thing to do and right. that is something that technology cannot right. cannot immediately solve so those missing persons cases or so some unidentified long lost cold cases and right. things like that right right so that's why more lot of uh, authors are writing stories like that mm. because they didn't have to deal with this technology <laughs> so technology is becoming a very much of a challenge for all the new authors and i think csi is the only one that probably uh was completely based on new technology right yeah how they do dna sequencing yeah. then yeah. matching or fingerprint and so many things like that mm. so that that was one of the series where we see a lot of really good technology being used mm. but yeah the, all the other uh, mystery writers are a little bit struggling mm. they usually set the story up like 10 years ago 20 years ago mm-hmm. old case mm-hmm. something like that mm. somehow they write a story and then they get around all these technological problems that makes sense no i suppose uh, uh, with the uh, technology and all of that and uh, because you have such a high saturation of mystery novels these yeah. days mm. it also becomes a point to like how do i reinvent it yes. to make sure it's still new and fresh True. so I, i suppose that is also another a problem that mystery writers yeah. might have and some of the most uh, some authors are like they are already are working in a profession where they interact with a lot of police mm. or they are journalists mm-hmm. and they do a lot, lot of research and mm. things like that mm. so like michael connelly is like he was a a journalist right who actually did police interviews and things like that right. then he's his experiences he wrote it as novels right. as different different characters and everything yeah. then so legal it, dramas or at least in legal way there is not much of a, the technology doesn't come into the picture that much it's only about evidences process it's about the character personality and things like that so that way probably that's a little bit more uh, interesting and safer yeah because the uh, legal dramas is more about identifying the behavior like mm, you said mm. so a lot of behavior yeah, analysis yeah, yeah personality analysis so th- those sort of like elements come into yeah, the picture yeah. there but yeah as a as an author you would probably need to know the legal system if you're writing about mm. that you need to know a little bit about the police uh, yes. way administration you mean we don't know you need to do a lot of research yeah that research and then you'll have to do a little bit of a little medical bit of medical research, research yeah. autopsy yeah. Yeah. how do you uh, say you know how about a cut on a body how do you you know and then now it, uh, the challenge is hacking as well mm. computer hacking or they, they also have to research more about that yeah at least to make it realistic yeah 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 like that So yeah, a lot of research. I suppose a lot of research goes into any type of writing, mm. but uh, with mystery novels, I suppose you need to know a little bit about everything so that it it turns out to be a believable sketch. Yeah, and there are also different kind of uh, spy novels as well. Mm. Not just mis- the different kind of mysteries, right? So mm. like some hidden documents, mm-hmm. and then like uh, even if you. see uh, the the darwin secret right, yeah. how it was and so a different kind of uh, writing writers basically yeah like uh, uh, in uh, delving a little bit into conspiracy but making yeah. sure it's like and sometimes it is based on history sometimes mm-hmm. based on wars mm-hmm. uh like uh, Re- recently i watched the kingsman mm. so i was like uh, i was i i knew a little bit about uh, the history of great britain europe mm. and mm. germany and all of that sorry germany everything is europe so uh, uh, how they incorporated that history and uh, turned a um, a fantasy a fantasy sort of a story into mm. you know fictional fictional sort of a story and melded it into history and made yeah. sure that it's most of the authors take inspirations from something in mm. history or something they write mm. i think the first thing is most of the authors are readers first yeah they yeah. read a lot they really, really read a lot Absolutely. and then then summarize and condense it into mm. stories mm. Uh, so basically the point i'm trying to make is uh, it's all uh, all these novels all have half truths in them mm. like so uh, they're based on some kernel of truth or some actual case yeah. or some true yeah. true news stories and things like that uh, even if it's just like a part of an evidence or just mm-hmm. like the history of it something in there is true mm-hmm. and that is what makes it believable to yeah. us yeah. so i think uh, that's how they like build as yeah. far uh, and the characters the characters are the most interesting about the character yes. development yes. and then how they interact with other people and so on yes So uh one more thing I want you told me that there was this movie called Knives Out. Knives Out. Yeah, there was some a new movie that was like a little bit refreshing. Mm-hmm. But again it uh, is very similar to how Agatha Christie sets up her novels. Mm-hmm. It's about a mystery writer mm-hmm. who dies and mm-hmm. then a detective who comes and uh, tries to find out who which of the family member 
murdered him and so on mm. i think it's interesting that a mystery writer dies and then you know they fire, try mm. to find out mm. who it is and there's a book and, about that yeah and then the most interesting part is about coincidences how they how they actually bring in coincidences huh. or or called red herrings huh, 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 which huh. are probably relevant but not relevant and things right. like that yeah yeah to mislead the reader also and yeah, i think at least now everything is there in movies mm. there are like writers in the movie or tv series mm-hmm. also explored a lot of different themes mm-hmm. at least initially old days probably there are not so many themes mm. but now there are a lot more themes to discuss mm. and more causes and things like that mm. i think uh, today at least the audiences are still not tired of watching murder mysteries or yeah. medical mysteries anything they still have a large appetite for them and people continue to make different different kinds of stories some are like comedy mm. mysteries mm. and some are like horror mm. related mysteries and mm. things like that mm. and people are not tired of it and people continue to write different different stories yeah. and then continue this tradition of uh, very specific genre genre of writing yes yes it's been there for a long time yeah. and yeah like you said i think it's going to be there for even more longer i think yeah. it's it's just about us finding our adventure in those yes, stories i yes. suppose True. so yeah we just yeah i i thought this was interesting and uh, yeah both of us uh, we read a lot of mystery novels so i thought we could talk about it and yeah that's all for today hey thanks for listening to bob and tag talk please consider following us on our instagram and facebook pages we put out weekly summaries of the topics discussed on the podcast and if you found this episode informative please like share and subscribe